It was launched over 40 years ago. Built with outdated tech, older than the internet, and yet Voyager 2 has just sent back one of the most unsettling revelations in the history of space science. While humanity fixates on Mars, colonies, and lunar bases, this quiet little spacecraft has slipped into a region we've never truly understood. And what it found was not just strange, it was boundary-breaking. A wall, a shift, a line so stark and dramatic, it confirmed something that shakes the foundation of space physics. The edge of our solar system is not just theoretical, it's real. And it may be more hostile than we ever imagined. Most of us picture space as empty, cold, quiet, and structureless. But Voyager 2 has shown us something far more chilling. Space is not empty. It's layered. It's organized. And what lies at the outermost edge of our solar system might not be meant for crossing. Launched in 1977 and expected to last just five years, 10 max, Voyager 2 has defied the odds for nearly five decades. Battling extreme radiation, cosmic debris, and the crushing silence between worlds, it has survived long past its expiration date. And somehow, it still whispers back to Earth, carrying with it tales from a region no human eye has seen. It now floats beyond the planets, alongside its twin, Voyager 1, into true interstellar space, the first time a human-made object has crossed from our home system into the cosmic unknown. But this isn't just symbolic, it's measurable. NASA tracked precise immediate changes in temperature, radiation, and plasma density, like hitting an invisible tripwire. It wasn't a slow fade into interstellar space, it was a gate, and crossing it changed everything. Before Voyager 2's findings, scientists thought the sun's magnetic bubble, the heliosphere, gradually thinned into the interstellar medium. They were wrong. Instead, Voyager 2 registered a spike in cosmic rays, a jump in temperature, and a shift in magnetic direction so sudden, so coordinated, it broke with decades of theory. The kicker? The solar and interstellar magnetic fields were perfectly aligned. That wasn't supposed to happen. The increase in galactic radiation was nearly 70%. It was like stepping out of shelter into a storm. The heliosphere wasn't just a bubble, it was a shield. One that protects us from the raw, violent energy of the galaxy. And now, outside it, we're exposed. Even more bizarre, Voyager 2 proved that this edge isn't a clean, round bubble. It's warped, it breathes, it pulses with the solar cycle, expanding and contracting every 11 years. Our star's magnetic field surges outward, shaping the boundary like a living, beating heart. The result? The outer edge of our system moves. It shifts. It may even open. This living boundary means that depending on when and where a probe exits, it sees a completely different frontier. Voyager 1 crossed it at 119 astronomical units, Voyager 2 at 121, and their readings. Totally different, different heat signatures, different densities, different magnetic turbulence. That's not a coincidence. It suggests the edge of our solar system is not a boundary, it's a behavior, it's reactive. Voyager 2 continues to drift into the dark, its energy source, an aging nuclear RTG set to die by 2030. When it does, our last live connection to that mysterious threshold will go silent. On board is the Golden Record, a time capsule of Earth's music, languages and maps, a cosmic invitation. But in hindsight, was that wise? Because what we've learned is this. The region beyond the heliosphere is not passive, it's charged, it moves, it responds, and we left a beacon pointing directly back to our planet. Bold, maybe, reckless, possibly, but either way, it's done. And Voyager 2 hasn't just been whispering plasma readings and radiation spikes, 
It's also been picking up something stranger, anomalies, electromagnetic surges, data fluctuations, glitches that don't always have a clean explanation. In 2019, it suddenly went silent. Instruments failed, hours passed, then it came back, perfectly operational. Engineers called it a fault. But how does a spacecraft 18 billion kilometers from Earth shut down and reboot itself without any command? Some believe it could have been external, not a system error, but a response to the environment. Maybe we're not just listening to deep space anymore. Maybe deep space is listening back. The differences between Voyager 1 and 2's journeys have forced a deeper question. Why are the boundaries they crossed not the same? Not even close. Some blame solar activity. Others suspect cosmic variance. But a few whisper something more chilling. What if the solar boundary adapts? What if it's not a fixed perimeter, but a reactive interface? What if it responds to presence? That means Voyager didn't just leave our system. It triggered something. It brushed against an intelligence, or at the very least, a system far older and more aware than we've ever considered. As Voyager 2 drifts farther from home, no cameras, no thrusters, and only a fading voice, we're left with revelations that change more than just science. They change our paradigm. Space is not chaos. It has form. It has behavior. And if the edge is real, if it aligns, pulses, notices, then maybe we've been inside something all along. Protected, sealed, monitored. And now for the first time, we've stepped outside. So the question isn't what is out there. Who built the wall in the first place? Let us know what you believe in the comments. Was Voyager 2 just crossing a natural line? Or did it trip something far more deliberate? And if you feel the universe might be more like a system than a wilderness, subscribe and turn on notifications. Because this story is just beginning. And the next signal might change everything.